we had against Miami. I thought we stayed really connected tonight defensively in the gaps. We protected the rim. Um, we had a really strong gaucho. We changed our pick and roll coverage. Uh, we iced tonight. We haven't really done that all year. Um, we had 11 kills coming out of a game where we probably didn't have any against Miami. They scored 18 points in the paint tonight, and probably the majority of those are in transition off our turnovers. Um, we did a really good job of getting to the line um, on offense, and that's really important, which we didn't do in the last two games. But I thought we did a great job of playing off two feet under control. Um, we got really good shots. We, we assisted on 15 of our 25 baskets, and they're a really good defensive team. They came into the, team, the game tonight 16th in the country in defensive efficiency. And they make it hard on you because they make you drive the ball into guys that can, to block shots. And so I thought we did a good job of, you know, sharing the ball. Uh, I think it was uh, first double-double for Dream in his career. Uh, great job of, for him uh, coming off the bench. I think it's the lowest points um, Florida State scored in a half this year. Uh, and um, I was told this is the largest win we've had in the ACC since 2017. So it was a good win, good bounce back for us. And I'll take questions. Steve, uh, you guys held the Seminoles like without a basket for like eight minutes in the first half and went on a 22 to two run. What was kind of the difference there? What, what did you get kind of turned around to, to make that run? Yeah, you know, um, I thought we were making them miss instead of hoping that they missed. Um, I thought we had a lot to do with that, keeping bodies in front of them and making them shoot contested shots. They missed some – they probably missed a couple shots, but everybody's going to do that, us included. You know, but, you know, and then we – like you said, we got stops and then we scored. You know, we, we didn't start the game real sharp, um, and then we kind of got going. We, we haven't really played a de against a defense like that this year. Um, we had a good plan for it. We didn't have a lot of time to work on. We had to spend so much time defensively that I thought we could really cut, you know, in motion, not exchange, but cut. And when we did, we got in the middle of their, of their offense, and then we made the right plays. We either scored it or we kicked it out. You know, Londis and Jake got inside of their defense and scored the ball, and uh, we got out and made some transition baskets. You guys kind of kept Malik Osborne pretty much invisible through the entire 40 minutes. He's quite a dangerous weapon. And I saw a lot of guys defending him. What was yeah. the key to that? Well, in the ice, you know, it keeps the ball on the side. And when he pops, which he was going to do, we had a good – we had a guard. We have built in helping that in the middle of the paint. And we stunted at him, put a little doubt in him. And then Dallas did a really good job of getting back to him. Or Dream, who was ever guarding him, and has that length to contest. And that makes a big difference having that length like they have, right? And so I think it was probably mostly that. You know, he missed a couple that he was, you know, he was pretty open. But um, he's a good player. He's a really good player. I think it's a really good win for us because I think, you know, they got really good players and a, and a Hall of Fame coach. And so um, I'm happy uh, for our guys. Steve, it seemed like you guys were pretty successful getting to the free throw line in that first half was – was that anything in particular? Was that just more of a rhythm thing? What, what went into making that happen? I don't know, Ethan. You know, I, I don't think we played a lot different than we've been playing, to be honest with you. Maybe we just drew more contact, um, you know, and we were pretty aggressive getting downhill. And that has a lot to do with them switching. Um, you can get them in a situation where you can drive them. And I thought that uh, we did a good job of drawing contact, not shying away from it, and uh, drawing fouls. And that's it's really important, like they did in that four-minute kind of run there in the second half. We got two spread out, and uh, they started driving it. And then they getting fouls, and they're getting calls. And so, um, you know, I thought we did – then we adjusted and got back to switching and back in the gaps, and they, they, they quit doing that. But probably just what I just said, just being aggressive and getting downhill. Coach, two-parter. How long before the game did you know Davian wasn't going to be available? And then were you happy with the way Carter filled in today? And what do you think he needs to do better? I've known about Davian since uh, Sunday. Um, you know, um, it's unfortunate, but it's just the world that we live in. It's a tremendous young man. Um, takes care of his business. But it is what it is in this world right now with what we're dealing with with COVID. 
Um, I thought Carter, you know, started off a little slow, um, but he got going. Carter had a really good game against Florida State last year down there. You know, Carter can get in the paint, and Carter's a good passer. He's got size. I thought he did it. I thought Carter plays about as good a defensive game as he's played uh, here, you know, this year. He, he was really, you know, bought in tonight in the gaps. He was tough. Kind of driven a couple times only in the first half. I thought in the second half he really locked down and played good defense. He doesn't have to score the ball for us. He, he can, but he just he's a very important uh, guy when it comes to moving the ball and running good offense. Steve, I know you guys were in control of the game pretty much, you know, throughout after the middle of the first half. But how concerning are the turnovers? And then on the flip side, how encouraging is it to have such a dominant effort on the, on the boards? Well, that's a good point. I mean, they kind of negate themselves, right? Um, yeah, we got a little sloppy, but, you know, I, I don't know. I think they're fourth in the country in forcing steals or something like that. And, they're you know, they're big and long. Now, we made some sloppy plays, um, especially when we had the lead. I'm not sure. We, we turned it over, what, nine times at, at half. Um, I thought we got relaxed a little bit, you know, um, Jake, it was uncharacteristic. You almost had him a triple double with, um, turnovers. I told him that after the game, but, um, I don't know. We'll see. I, I'm not going to pit the panic buttons. We've run a really good job of taking care of the ball, um, uh, for the last month or so. The last time we really turned it over was a lot was against LSU, you know, um, so we'll see. I, I was really proud of the way we rebounded the ball. You know, 53-30 on the glass, 11 offensive rebounds. Gave us some extra possessions. Um, you know, Alondis had 20 and 6, Jake 22 and 7. You know, um, uh, Dream 16 and 10. I thought, you know, I thought when kind of when we needed a basket, not that we were, you know, they kind of made a little run. I thought Zay made a big three uh, right at the top of the key there. Um, about midway through the second half. Coach, uh, earlier in the season against William and Mary and uh, Western Carolina, or not, sorry, it wasn't Western, but there were a couple of times when you had a big lead and got, you talked about guys playing to the score. What was yeah. the key tonight to, you know, winning that second half by nine points? Well, first of all, I can't remember what day it is, let alone William and Mary and Western Carolina. Just kidding. Um, you know, the key is defense, right? We, they, they were, they got to spread out bad. There for a little bit. They're just dribble weaving. Like Coach Hamilton called timeout. He knew what he he knew the best best way to get back in the game was to get to the line. And they started going, putting their head down and going downhill. And we were spread out. And then that's then they, they were driving gaps. Called timeout, started switching the weave, stayed in those elbows that I've been talking about, and they didn't have any place to go. So I think the key, the answer to your question is it's not offense, is that we played. We, 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 we lock back down defensively. Anyone Steve, have any? have, oh, sorry. Yeah, one, one more. Okay. Uh, Steve, with Davion being out and everything, how important was it or how uh, crucial was it for you guys to have two guys like Alondis and Laravia who can create pitch and pass and do all that kind of stuff from, from unique positions on the floor? Yeah, I mean, it's everything. You know, and if you look at our numbers, guys, you know, Jake and Alondis lead us in assists because they have the ball in their hands a lot. They're the highest usage guys on the team. It's nothing against Davian or Carter. They're not have, they don't have the ball in their hands as much as those guys do because they're really good ball handlers with great size. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I want Davian to be able to play. But I knew we could play a big lineup tonight. We played um, – because they're big, right? We played Alondis at the one. We played Zay at the two. Jake at the three. C at the four, and uh, Walton at the five. That's a big lineup. I thought Cameron played well, too. He, You know, he got in the paint at will. He just, you know, he's got to get off two feet and shot fake. But, um, yeah, it's big to have those two guys be able to handle the ball like they do. They had nine assists between them, you know, and so um, big advantage. And, it, it, you know, we're going to play through them all year long. Does anyone have anything else for Coach? So. Everybody like the everybody like the vest. What do you think? Huh? Put the WF on it here. Little Sun's anarchy look. It's slimming, coach. We good? Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks, coach. All right.
how everybody doing? <laughs> All right, guys, we have Hadeem C, and we'll open the floor for questions. Questions for Dream? I hope they don't have any. Dream, how does it feel to get that win after you have the two losses on the road? Can't hear you. What are we supposed to do? I barely can hear you. I'm sorry. Dr Hadeem, can you hear me? Hello, yes, hello. Yes. Hey, you got me. You got me. Hey, man. Uh, how does how good does it feel to get this win after the losses on the road? Oh, it feel amazing. You know, I think everybody know how losing feel, I guess. Like, that's not a good feeling. So, us winning this tonight really feel amazing to start, like, a winning streak again because I think we lost two on the road and that we should have won. Like, give credit to the uh, FSU team. They have a pretty good team, young, but they compete. We just, I think we execute better tonight, so we got it done. Kadeem, do you like coming off the bench, and how does that help you settle into the game, being able to watch for the first few minutes from the bench? I mean, I was not used to come off the bench, but with this thing, I, I love it, like, because we love each other over here. It doesn't matter who come, in, who come who is a starter and who come off the bench. And coming off the bench help better because you see, I think, the game better. Like, you see... Like, uh, what's working, what's not working, like, what you should adjust when you get there. I think coming off the bench, like, is not a problem with me right now at all. And I'm loving it, so. Can you give us a, a sense of maybe what happened in that first media timeout that, that helped you guys settle in defensively a little bit? I mean, you know how coach is when you call timeout, when things don't go right, he, he chew, he's chew on us, so. Make sure, like, guys got to pick it up because he know we can do it. We've done it many games, like, in the preview. So, he know we can do it. So, when he, when he call a timeout, he just chew on us and everybody respond on the right way. So, I think that helped us to just accomplish the defensive we was trying to do. Hadeem, you've played ACC basketball before with your time at Virginia Tech. So, how would you say you've developed as a player from then to now, especially with your double-double tonight? I mean, uh, I would say I was younger back then because I played only one year as a freshman and I was averaging like, I think, 11 minutes a game. So, and then have a first double double in the ACC back again on my fifth year. That's that's big, to be honest, really, because I, I kind of forgot how the ACC was, you know, because after, after my first year, I went to JUCO and I went to, uh, to the SEC. But having a double double tonight feel amazing, to be honest. <laughs> Deem, how what do you like about playing in that big lineup with you and Dallas and Alondis at the one? Uh, how do you like playing in that big lineup? Oh, I love it. I think it helped us uh, like a lot when we play the big lineup because I think the ACC has some big like big players like the team. This shortest guy usually be like six two at least. Like so, us to able to play uh, a big lineup in the early, able to use it going going to this ACC plays like I think. That will help the coaches love it, so we're just gonna follow what they want to do. They want to play the lineup. We're just trying to make it work because I think everybody can play his position, and me and Dallas can switch it anytime. We can be a four or the five. I can be the four or the five. So we ex we interchange it. So I think that helped the team a lot. Does anybody have anything else? All right, that's Thank all you. for tonight. Thanks. Yeah.